going to share with you one of our family favorites. My girls, I think they would eat their weight in this if I let them. Um, it's called Indian Potato Coconut Curry. It's really easy and what I like about it is that it is, it can be adapted. You can add other things to it. All right, so this is sort of a base of where you could start. But if there are other vegetables that you enjoy, absolutely throw them in the pot. There's, there's no limit in terms of what you can throw in the pot. I've, I've suggested green beans or peas just because that's what my girls like. But I've used broccoli, I've used eggplant, I've used you name it. Leftover veggies in the fridge go in the pot. Um, any, anything like that. So the first thing you're going to do is I use this about four potatoes. I have used sweet potatoes and I really like sweet potatoes instead of regular potatoes. I've also used half and half. Um, for the purposes of tonight, I, I have used regular potatoes. And when I use my potatoes, I scrub them really well, but I leave the skins on. Why would I do that? More vitamins. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's more nutrition. In fact, there's a tremendous amount of nutrition in the skins of most of your, of your vegetables, and including some fruits. Um, so I leave the skins on. It also increases the protein content. And I don't always um, soak my potatoes in cold water, but for this particular dish, I actually do. Um, I will chop up my potatoes, just sit them to the side in a dish of cold water. The cold water helps those potatoes to really crisp right up so that as you're cooking your curry and you're, you're waiting for those flavors to really meld, the potato doesn't completely disintegrate and you have mush, all right? Soaking your potatoes, even whole potatoes, if your potatoes are a little droopy, if you soak them in a, in a big pan of water for a few hours, they'll firm right back up, okay? So that's just a neat little trick there. Calls for um, six uh, cloves of garlic. So for me, Garlic and onion go in pretty much everything, and the more the better. So if it calls for six, I'm probably going to use ten, maybe twelve. Fortunately, my husband really likes garlic, um, so he puts up with the bad breath. My grandmother uh, ate a clove of garlic every single day. She cut, you know, a head of garlic in her house, and every single day she ate a clove just raw, and she did not have any difficulties with uh, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes just didn't bite her. <laughs> she didn't have many friends, but <laughs> she, yeah, she, she really didn't. She ate it every day. And so now I'll tell you the cheat. For those of you who've been to the program before, you've heard me say this, but for those of you who are new, I rarely do what I'm doing right now in terms of chopping my garlic. I buy my garlic in bulk, already peeled, it's about a five pound bag of it and I put it in a food processor and I whiz it down, I mince it basically in the food processor and then I freeze it in ice cube trays. And so at any given time I'll have a stack of ice cube trays in my freezer with garlic. Now if I was really smart I'd pop them out and maybe put them in a different container but I haven't gotten that advanced yet. But that way I always have um, fresh garlic because the stuff you buy in the jar at the grocery store it's tasteless it serves no purpose whatsoever it's just bleh. Um, fresh garlic is always much more flavorful um, I am out of my frozen garlic so tonight I actually did chop it up but I usually don't do that so we've got our garlic. Um, this recipe actually does not call for an onion. I always use onion because I put onion in anything. Um, so, and when I saute my onion, I usually do it with the garlic and I do it with just a smidgen of salt, whether the recipe calls for that or not. When you saute your onion and just a smidgen of salt, it brings out the sweetness of the onion, okay? And whenever you're dealing with onions, if you can have a couple of different kinds of onions going on in the pot, that's even better. It sort of rounds out the flavor that you get from the onion. So I almost, it's very rare that I won't 
um, that I won't saute my onions and garlic in just a smidgen of salt. Not a lot, just enough to uh, bring, that, bring that flavor right on out. So when I uh, do my onions, I just, you know, dice them up fairly small because no one wants to just bite into a chunk of onion usually. So we've got our onion, we've got our garlic, at least double the garlic because that makes everything better. And I have been known um, to add even a little bit of ginger. If you use oil, you could use a little bit of oil, but I very rarely ever do. I figure there's enough fat on my body, I don't need to add any more. So I usually use just a smidgen of oil, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, water, pardon me, to saute my vegetables in. And you don't need a lot, just a little bit in the bottom of your pan just to keep it from sticking. We're just gonna let that saute a little bit there. And I'm gonna add just a smidgen of salt. All right. So while that does its thing, I'm going to gather my seasonings together. Now this calls for both cumin seeds and ground cumin, okay? So cumin seeds I, I use in a wide variety of dishes, um, whether it's Indian or Middle Eastern dishes, all of those things often call for cumin seeds. So I just buy, buy a bag of it and keep it in my pantry. Um, many people are not familiar with cumin seeds. They're a tiny little brown seed um, and they're, they're very fragrant, they're very aromatic um, and I appreciate that about them very much. So this calls for about a teaspoon of whole cumin seed. Now I will tell you the truth, these cumin seeds are a little bit older than I like them to be, so they're not quite as pungent. So I add a little bit more, okay? So this is cooking down. After that begins to sizzle a little bit, I'm gonna add a couple of red chilies. Now the recipe calls for one, but um, I like a little zip in my food, so I use two. Now, these are whole chilies, so I'm gonna get the flavor of the chili without the heat of the chili. Does that make sense? Now, I want to make sure that they are fully intact, right? Because if they're not fully intact, I'll get the flavor and the heat. And my mother-in-law wouldn't appreciate that. She doesn't like anything hot. Um, so I'm gonna throw those in there and they begin to sizzle down. And it's just a few seconds that you're gonna do this that those chili peppers will begin to get dark, all right? As the chili peppers begin to get dark, then you know you're about ready to move on. Under normal circumstances, I would have allowed the garlic and the onions to saute a little bit longer, but for the sake of time, we're, we're, gonna, move, we're gonna move right along. So we've chopped our, tomato, our potato, we've got our garlic, our, our red pepper, our cumin, now our coconut. So I like to use unsweetened coconut. This, this recipe actually uses um, like fresh coconut. Honestly, it's hard to buy fresh, doesn't that smell good? I know. It's hard to find fresh coconut in America, right? So what I do, and when you get the unsweetened kind, it's even harder, right? It's just, it's a little crunchy almost. So what I do is I put it into a bowl and I will pour hot water over it. Not a lot, I'm not wanting to drown it. Just a smidgen of hot water and it will soften it right up. Okay, if it's too much, I'll pour it off, but very rarely. Um, I'll just take, you know, the coconut with a little bit of water, and I, I do that right at the very beginning. So before I chop my potato, I've gone ahead and I've poured a little bit of hot water on that coconut, and I just set it aside. And at home, I'd put a plate on top of this to keep the heat in. Um, so then once this has sauteed, I'm just going to pour my coconut right in. So you want to work that coconut in with the garlic and the onions and the 
the cumin seed. And then we're going to add our tomatoes. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for those of you who have gardens, my tomatoes are starting to come in. I told the girls we were either going to have a really expensive tomato because I got our garden in so late, or we were going to have a bumper crop. I wasn't sure which it was going to be. And it seems like if the weather holds, we're going to have a bumper crop. So you can absolutely use fresh tomatoes in this. If you have them, just chop them right up. Most uh, Indian recipes will tell you to take the skin off. I never take the skin off. I always leave the skin on. I'm going to add tomatoes here. And now I am going to pour the water off my potatoes. I'll just pour my potatoes right in. And then I'll add my seasonings. So it calls for a half a teaspoon. If a little bit is good, a lot is better, right? That's not true with cumin. A little bit of ground cumin goes a very long way. So it's better to add a little and, and taste it. And if you need to add more, do so. But although a lot of garlic and a lot of onion is good, a lot of cumin, not so much. It'll completely overpower your dish. Calls for turmeric. How many of you are familiar with turmeric? Most of us are. Um, it's a great anti-inflammatory. I tend to work it into strange places and things. Goes in a lot of my soups. Um, Dr. Howe makes a wonderful salad dressing, turmeric salad dressing. For those of you who like honey mustard um, salad dressing, um, that's a great thing. And then our salt. Now I already added a smidgen of salt when I was sauteing those those um, the garlic and the onion so I'm not going to add as much this time and we're just going to let that cook down okay we've got our potato our garlic our pepper our seeds our coconut turmeric cumin tomatoes salt and you just let that cook this will cook you know everybody's stove is a little bit different you're going to bring it up to a boil you'll add a little bit of water here maybe a cup to a cup and a half um, you will let it cook for, you know, about 30 minutes, um, whatever it takes for your, um, you know, your stove to, to be able to, to cook that down. And then shortly about 10 minutes before those potatoes are tender, I'm going to add my other vegetables. It might be peas, it might be green beans. I've been known to add leftover beans like kidney beans. That's really good in here. Kidney beans are really good in here. Um, any, any of your vegetables, broccoli, whatever you like. I always like to add something green because this is a very yellow dish and that's just kind of boring. Um, so I like to have something green. For you, for tonight I added green beans and I meant to bring peas to put in here and I left them in my fridge. But normally I would, I would add something green in here. Let that cook. The, the last 10 minutes or so, and that's it. Now most Indian cooks um, would add at the end of this like a um, little bit of sugar um, and a little bit of vinegar. I, I don't use vinegar, um, but I will sometimes add a smidgen of lemon juice at the very end after it's completely finished cooking. As I'm just getting ready to serve it, I will add just just a little bit of, of lemon juice, one teaspoon of lemon juice, okay? Um, there's something about the acid that sort of helps to round, round out that flavor. And then I do normally add some sort of sweetener to this, again, at the very end, just before you serve it. I have been known to soak dates um, and whiz those up in a blender and add just a date or two in here um, for a cheat tonight I brought date sugar um, but I've also been known to, to use raisins um, just soak raisins like I soaked the, the coconut soak a few raisins in some warm water get them good and soft you can whiz those up and pour it in just a little smidgen of sweet helps to offset the acid from all those tomatoes and makes it really nice now you can eat this plain just as it is. That's actually how my girls like it. Um, as, as like a, a curry type soup, you can put it over brown rice. 
Um, I have seen uh, my husband pull out leftover spaghetti and pour it over the spaghetti, you know, what, whatever you like. Um, we typically eat it just plain as a, as a one dish meal or else we'll put it over a little bit of brown rice. Um, it's really nice. I've never frozen it because it just doesn't last that long. <laughs> honestly and when I make it usually I will double the recipe because it's it's just devoured